And how do you think um, being a woman makes you a different type of leader? Well, I think it can be more confusing sometimes because women, um, we're expected, you know, uh, to have, you know, our family. We have to take care of ourselves. We care for our employees on all levels. Mm -hmm. um, I have, you know, learned a lot because to me, my company is my family. But to be a good boss, sometimes I cannot look at someone as my sister. Mm -hmm. You know, she's my employee. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of emotional for me that I've had to mature into mm -hmm. because I started this company I was very young you know I started in 1992 I'm 40 gonna be 44 this year I feel like I'm just starting to really understand the professional world mm -hmm. and how to be connected to a human being but then also the expectations that need to be met you know and what about um masculine qualities I and mean, have you have you observed those grow in you as well in your leadership roles well they were even more so I feel that I have become now more feminine I feel like when I first started my company I became more masculine mm -hmm. um, to the ambitious one the goal you know reaching certain goals totally result oriented mm -hmm. and I feel like that was very masculine mm -hmm. and even though I was being creative and developing new products it was totally about the end result mm -hmm. and I, that's what I needed to do and I feel now that I've come into my 40s and I went through some you know tough you know emotional relational mm -hmm. things I wanted to go back to being the feminine and now I've realized that was the more powerful energy mm -hmm. I've done it you know, this has been my path this is what I've learned no right or wrong about it but I wonder if I would have stayed in my feminine early on and felt I would felt safe enough to do that mm -hmm. I think I felt more protected in the masculine energy. But even the way I dressed, the way I, you know, took care of myself, um, it it did not seem to be as important. Mm -hmm. It's not like I totally went into this, you know, like oh, I looked like a man. No, I was still a woman doing, you know, this job. However, I was very tough, and I don't know where that came from. Is there anything for you that felt masculine also about money? Does that feel? Definitely, I um, definitely, yeah. definitely, yes. I felt that. Because um, I was going up against a lot of big companies, a lot of male-ran companies, and I felt like I needed to act like I was really tough, mm -hmm. you know, and that I could handle my own, and you know, nobody better mess with me, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> and that comes from the whole monetary gain. You know, yeah. I had it was a very competitive market, my business, and still is. And didn't you share with me that there was actually a man in your life who helped? remind you about the heart piece in running your business? Just recently I took some executive training mm -hmm. and this gentleman is older, he's in his 60s and he, you know, he, he, he brought to me and he showed me all the things that were really working about mm -hmm. me and then he said the one thing I needed to do was to get, to I needed to always come from my heart mm -hmm. and that is what would um, impact people on whatever level no matter how difficult the situation, if I would come from my heart Mm -hmm. I would be the kind of leader people would want to follow. Mm -hmm. Not just because I was paying them a paycheck, not because um, of the title I was going to give them, because they were inspired. Mm -hmm. And that, for some reason, really hit home with me. So I've been working on it. It's hard. It's, it's very hard to keep my heart open when I feel business world can be so the need to, like, okay, you need to defend. Mm -hmm. Because I feel sometimes we can feel attacked. Mm -hmm. And how do we keep ourselves open mm -hmm. to that confidence, that integrity, and not shutting down again? And now in your industry, there's sort of this, it's not a, it's not a backlash, it's just kind of a growing evolution around wellness and health and toxicity. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, the body shop started a lot of that conversation, mm -hmm. uh, you know, about cruelty free. And mm -hmm. do, I mean, do you see that? And to me, that feels like very women are really owning that this is going into my body on my body and mm -hmm. someone decided to make it toxic at one time. I think that women who have children are really considering this now. And that is what may be very impactful on our planet. Um, the mothers of the world mm -hmm. and the fathers, mm -hmm. they want their children to be healthy. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like that's where it starts with the food that we eat and then the you know kind of materials they're going to be around, the materials they're going to wear, the doctors they're going to go to, the medicine they have to take. And so I think that's what's very important right now. I need to figure out how I can um, be environmental, whatever that is going to mean. Mm -hmm. So right now it's about education for us. That's great. 
we need um, the feminine perspective or the feminine value system to really kind of help drive a lot of the change that's happening in the world today. And that's really, there's a calling that we need this to really sort of recenter and recalibrate ourselves. Do you agree with that statement? Definitely, but I want to be careful mm -hmm. because I want it to be inclusive. Feminine to me includes, right, all dynamics, mm -hmm. um, all sexes, all ages, mm -hmm. and that to me is the ultimate feminine because it heals, so it's not separation. So whatever that feminine energy is that's evolving, I think we will see what that's going to become so that we all can be a part of it. Thank you, Anissa. Thank you, Lewis.